Hi and welcome to our COP28 interview series here in Dubai. Now a huge part of discussions at COP have been how we can best leverage private sector engagement and new technologies to address crucial climate issues. Someone who's been asking these questions for well over a decade now is Dawn Lippert, founder and CEO of Elemental Accelerator, a non-profit investor that is bringing innovation to communities. So welcome Dawn. So tell us about Elemental Accelerator's mission and what is this approach that you have by tackling climate change through technology and community impact? Yes, thanks so much for having me. So Elemental Accelerator is a nonprofit investor. So we invest in companies that have deep community impact and are solving problems in climate. And we map our investments across the highest emitting sectors in climate. So think energy, transportation, industry, and we invest in companies along those sectors. So far, Elemental, we've invested in over 150 companies. And with those companies, we've deployed projects in communities with a particular focus on frontline communities to bring real climate benefits onto the ground. So think investing in geothermal for 24-hour clean energy, investing in clean water technologies, investing in electric vehicle charging infrastructure for everyone, investing in community solar so everyone has access to solar even in affordable housing. So those are the kinds sure, of things sure. we invest in. So frontline communities, you know, what does that mean? Tell us more about the people that you are helping with this work. So we think about particularly investing in communities who are going to be hurt first and worst by climate change and engaging communities in the solutions. So we work really closely with companies to determine how to partner with communities. How do you provide community benefit much more broadly from climate technologies? We see across our portfolio that 93% of companies that engage proactively with community partners as part of their project see real benefit in project success from doing that. So they have a real desire to partner with communities. It's really about building the tools and capacity um, in CEOs early so that as they grow, companies have that capability built into their DNA. So what, in your opinion, here at COP28, what are the most pressing climate issues that industry leaders should be looking at? Well, it's really exciting at COP this year to see more entrepreneurs and innovators than we've ever seen before. I think it's a recognition that the policymakers need to know what's happening on the ground and innovation. And innovation is moving so fast right now, and policymakers need to be in much closer conversation with entrepreneurs to make really good policy. And entrepreneurs need really good policy to set sort of the stage for what they're working on more broadly. So the two really need each other, and it's very exciting to see technology innovation at the center of COP this year. One of the challenges we see as a really um, key part of COP that many people are now working on is there's a major financing gap around climate. And at the earliest stages, we see lots of funding for you know, venture capital. If you're a student inventing something new, there's lots of new ideas and lots of new technology being invented now. At the very latest stages, we see you know, there's uh, banks and financial institutions and others that want to finance things that are fully de-risk. So think a new solar farm or something like that. But in the middle, it's really challenging to get financing for a new technology between you know, five million and a hundred million dollars to fund, let's say, the first sustainable aviation fuel plant or the first hybrid electric airplane or the first geothermal plant doing something. That can be a really difficult place to fund. And yet, 50% of the technologies we need to meet our Paris Agreement goals are not yet widely commercially available. So we have to fix this financing gap in order to scale the technologies to reach decarbonization. Okay, so it's the scale gap issues. Um, what are you doing at Elemental to address this? Well, at Elemental, we are laser focused on this scale gap. As a nonprofit investor, we have the amazing ability to be right at the edge of where we see the market moving. So we can invest in things the market isn't quite ready to invest in yet and be super catalytic to bring in private sector funding and other funding, and importantly, federal government funding and other funding into that gap. So we see two key pieces to bridge this gap. One is capital. And so you know, we see across the elemental portfolio a $4 billion gap, financing gap, um, which means it's, there's an enormous opportunity there for impact. If we can help close that gap, if we can bring in catalytic dollars both from structured philanthropy in a really sort of clear and catalytic way, and also from federal government dollars 
we can help close that capital Catalytic gap. dollars, can you elaborate in layman's terms? What does that mean? Sure, so catalytic dollars could be dollars to fund like initial engineering studies for a stable aviation plant. We're working with a company that's doing textile recycling. So think of all the clothes you're wearing. Um, they can be recycled into new fibers for new clothes. We don't have to constantly be creating um, sort of new, new fashion items. Uh, so those kinds of companies, if we can provide initial dollars to do the engineering, to do the siting, to do permitting, to work with local government officials, that de-risks the project, and then banks and other capital sources can come in. So we see capital as a key bridge, and that's one of the things that Elemental is focused on. Sure. The other thing is community. So climate is, you know, all climate technologies have to go somewhere. So if you're talking about electric buses or implementing air conditioning in schools, you know, this isn't all just happening in the cloud or happening digitally. It all happens in communities, in real neighborhoods. And so one of the things we've been really focused on is working with CEOs of companies at the early stage to learn how to partner really well with communities, to learn how to build a workforce in the communities where they are, to learn how to build community benefits plans that really make sense for places where they're deploying. So you know, we have a company that we work with called Source, and we deploy with them in Australia, and they make fresh water out of sunlight and air. And so really thinking through, how can the community be involved in that project? There's amazing things that community members know that companies don't know when they're coming into a new location. So there's a ton of value there. And we see that 93% of the companies that we work with in this way say that working with community partner really contributed to project success. So this is not just about doing something that feels good, but it's about accelerating our energy transition. Sure, and really connecting those key stakeholders is so important. Um, I want to look ahead now uh, to the future. What is Elemental Accelerator's kind of hopes um, in, the immediate, in the immediate next few years, considering there is going to be such a collective effort required to bridge this climate technology funding and implementation? So, you know, at Elemental, what we're trying to do is, is build companies that can attract significant private capital. We've already seen more than $8 billion of follow-on funding come into Elemental portfolio companies. We're trying to create a really healthy finance ecosystem and climate so that the best ideas and inventions invented by people from all different backgrounds, you know, more than half of our Elemental portfolio is actually founded by women and people from traditionally excluded backgrounds in entrepreneurship and in venture. So we want to create a future where anybody with a great idea can found a company and become an enormous part of the solution to climate. We see this as the biggest opportunity for investors and for entrepreneurs in our lifetimes is transitioning our mobility systems, transportation systems, our energy system, our water systems, our agriculture systems into regenerative agriculture. These are huge opportunities and huge markets. And we want to create a, a world in which any entrepreneur can go after that and be financed and create a company that's extremely valuable and extremely meaningful in terms of impact. Some key takeaways there for the inclusive COP28. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much.